this uh, place where we get away. So we're carrying on from our study this morning. We ask the question um, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, the word Babylon comes up six times, and they ask, what does Revelation refer to in the book of Revelation? Sorry, what does Babylon refer to in the book of Revelation? Um, we know it's not that local, ancient nation. We understand that. But what does it refer to? So we had a number of different answers of what Babylon actually comprises of. So we were looking in Revelation 16 and we went specifically to verse 19. The great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So I asked what was this great city in this verse and people said that it's Babylon. So we went through a short discussion and what we did was we went through this phrase great city. We found it in three places, three places, maybe even four. Revelation 16.9. We've got the phrase great city, and we've got 16, 19. Where else did you see the phrase? Remember? Sorry? Um, sorry, in 11, 8. 14, 8. Anywhere else? 17, 18. Does it say that? Yes, it's Let's check. Can you read that for us? Yeah, um, it says, And the woman which thou sawest in that great city, which made it for the kings of the earth. So we've got uh, four verses that deal with the great city. We're saying 11, 8 is France. And 14.8, remind us of what 14.8 says. There followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. So we know that 14.8 is Babylon. And 17.18, it says the great city is who? The woman. It said it's the woman. But then in 17, verse 5, the woman is who? It's Babylon. So we have three verses that tell it it's Babylon. Uh, sorry, two that tell it it's Babylon. One that says it's France. And in 16, 19, read that again to us. And the great city was divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So in 16.9, what is this great city here? Can it really be clearly identified as being Babylon? 
or is it saying that the cities here are the nations that they're Babylon? How do we read that? She's just summarising what we, what we came to before. Takes the conclusion that the great city is different from the cities of the nations. Okay. And that the great city was Babylon. So we said that the great city was Babylon and the cities were. We didn't, we didn't come to a conclusion, but Sister Carolee inferred what? She didn't infer she actually stated it, but we didn't finish through with that thought. What did she infer? Sorry? Confederacy? I don't think she said that. No, it's not to do Genesis 10, verse 10. Yes. She said it was all the cities that were in the land of Babylon. <laughs> So she made this distinction between the city, Babylon, and all the other cities that were in the land, which she called Babylonia, which is China. So she made that conclusion. We didn't finalise that. So we're saying that this great city here is also Babylon. And in 11.8, we said it's France, and then we went to 11.13. And in 11.13, it says what? And the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000 and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. And what we want to pick up from here is it says it's the tenth part of the city. So if we're going to connect these thoughts together, we're saying France is the great city, and then in 13, we're also saying that France is the tenth, tenth part of what? The city and the city is what? Babylon. So that's a summary of where we got to this morning, that we're trying to understand what Babylon is. And 1619 says that Babylon is divided into three parts. So we asked 1619 what the three parts are. And we went to 1613 to see what those three parts are. It's composed of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And it's going to tell you what these uh, frogs are. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. I'll read to the uh, 16. Behold, I come as a thief, lest it is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathereth them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And Armageddon um, is the subject of this week's lesson. It's Babylon and Armageddon. So if we go back to 16 uh, verses 13 and 14, what are we seeing in that uh, chapter? In those two verses, sorry. Spiritualism. Anyone else? Religious powers and state of powers. Apostate religious powers and state of powers. And the 
So we've got the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and what's coming out of their mouths? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of these people. So spirits are coming out of their mouth. So we've got these three spirits that are coming out of their mouths. So when we have things coming out of people's mouths, um, what do we say that is? Sorry? You speak a little bit louder, I didn't catch that. No, you have to speak louder, not him. I heard what he said. No, no, what Carol Lee said. I was only going back to Adam in Matthew Mark, I don't know what he says. What comes out of your mouth is what they are. So, can you find the verse for us? What did you say, brothers? Thomas? I said words, and I'm going to go to Daniel 7. Daniel 7, verse 25. Uh, yes, it should be great words. It's got to be the words of Yeah, Daniel 7, verse 25. He should speak. And he should speak great words against the most high. Okay, so it's speaking. The spirit prophecy quote for that. Yes, yeah, we find the spirit prophecy quote. You've got Daniel 7. Stress? Speak, speak, things. Yeah, that's Daniel 7. Great prophecy, he said. 442, paragraph 1. Did you have it in your Bible? Yes. 442, paragraph 1. Point 1. So he's going to teach us that the speaking of a nation is something. So, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll read it. <coughs> GC 442. Yeah. The lamb-like horns and dragon voice of the symbol point to a striking contradiction between the professions and the practice of the nation thus represented. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. By such action it will give the lie to those liberal and peaceful principles which it has put forth is the foundation of its policy. The prediction that it will speak as a dragon and exercise all the power of the first beast plainly foretells the development of the spiritual intolerance and persecution that was manifested by the nations represented by the dragon and the leopard -like beast. And the statement that the beast with two horns causes the earth and then its world therein to worship the first beast indicates that the authority of this nation is to be exercised in enforcing some observance which shall be an act of homage to the papacy. So, uh, tell us what that's teaching. Um, it was just commenting on Revelation 13 verse 11, where we have this lamb like beast that speaks like a dragon, and she comments on the speaking of the is the action of the legislative and judicial authorities which is um, based to passing laws. So the speaking is uh, equated to passing laws. 
So we're picking up this phrase, the speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. Why is that important to know? When it talks about um, the legislative and judicial authorities. Sorry? Two things there saying that there's laws that are already in place, and there's laws that they want to make. Where do you see that it, it's already in place? The um, judicial, judicial laws, and then you've got the legislature where they're actually going to make them, so they legislation. What do you know from the assignment? Do we agree with that? Yeah. I'm not sure, I'm not sure the word judicial is necessarily means there's anything in place. I think it's... it's so you don't agree? He doesn't agree with what you're saying? Okay. So, carry on. She, she's, she's making a distinction between the legislation and the judicial law. So, a judicial law? Yeah, so the legislative is something that they're going to make. They're going to make a new legislation, which, is, which we know is, is what these verses are talking about. So okay. Psalms 83 is talking about they're going to make laws. Um, I think the verse that we've just spoken about as well is, is talking about laws that are going to be made. So the laws that are going to be made and there's laws that are made that are causing all that, that can cause problematic to keep God's people. So I'm, just, I'm just trying to make a distinction between the legislation and the judicial law. Between some that's already set and some that's going to be set. Is that how you understand what those two phrases mean? Yeah. Sister Cedric, do you agree or disagree? I disagree because it says judicial authorities. So I, I, so I, 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 I thought it meant like here yeah, all the judges. It's, it, it's, saying the, it's saying the legislative authorities and the judicial authorities. Oh, sorry, hang on. Um, the authorities are connected to both the, the legislative and the judicial. Sorry, where is it again? Fourth one. Second sentence, I think. The lamb-like horns and dragon voice. With legislated and judicial authorities. Yeah, but the authorities relate to both the legislative and the judicial. It's not just one. Then you, you seem to pick up the authorities, I'm saying. It applies to both. Oh, yeah, I realise now really that it's... So why do you disagree? Uh, so, I'm sorry, I just thought you made the judicial laws. And it's in authority. So I, I think I thought this meant like everything has been set up. They already got these things in place. Like when it says authorities, I don't mean like the judges, the magistrates. Uh, there's laws already, um, some laws on the statute that just to bring in those kind of things that they want. That's what he said. That's what he said, I think. <coughs> Uh, no, he said the laws are already kind of set up. That's what you just said. <laughs> well, not the laws as we know, like the Sunday law, but uh, certain laws. Um, so, so, you, so you, yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking about the authorities to bring about this law. Okay. The authorities, meaning the people in place, well, to bring about these laws. Uh, not very clear on it, but I just thought it meant. That two wings of government, the Supreme Court, I think is the judicial, as the judges in it. And then is it the Senate that um, votes on laws, uh, writes the laws maybe? I'm not, I'm not very clear. Uh, Robert Yeah, um, I would be in But the irony is the fact that I think the legislative and judicial, you need both of them to come together to pass a law. Um, the way the American system is set up um, to pass law, to get out of law, you need executive powers. Um, it doesn't mention anything about executives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading it. <laughs> <coughs> um, yeah, so how I understood it is, is that these represent two branches of the, I think the word, government to come together to pass a law. So, they're, so, they're not so you're saying that. The judicial authorities help to pass laws. Yeah. But we know that's not correct. It's not that it's not even their problem that, is it? 
interpret. I think the Bible wants to interpret. Um, oh, to interpret. To the Bible, I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. Just the Christ. Judiciary interpret. Okay, so we're at the end of the world and we don't understand how the American system I'm, works. I'm in trouble. I think they interpret the Constitution. Okay, so the first thing we know is um, it's a republic and it's got three branches of government. So we'll go with that. The three branches of government are the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive branch. So they're the three. Do we all know that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay? Okay, so did you know it's threefold? So, some of the staff, where's that? <laughs> they didn't find it. Yeah. Well, give me the chapter, give me the chapter. Revelation 8. So, we've got the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive branch. Person? Oh, I'm looking for it. I thought it was, it was given it. Revelation 8. Uh, I don't know if you. You can if you want. No, I don't want. We don't want to help. Well, Revelation 13, okay? No, 8. Revelation 8. Revelation 8, okay. Um, Can she help you? Read it out for us. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the star. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and okay. the night likewise. Well, imagine what's that referring to? Revelation 8 13. 12. It's talking about Rome and how Rome was set up. With the, with the three powers within Rome, how, how it's yeah, you've got the Emperor, and then you've got the um, Senate, and then you have the. Um, and what famous talk are we going to use to launch from that into this study? Huge two inch book that's on your, box, on your shelf. By A.T. Jones. Great agents of the day. Truth triumphant. The two republics. So this is the two republics. So this is a republic. A republic has got, they set up this threefold government. And you've got the legislative, so the judicial, legislative, and executive branch. Um, so this one, uh, someone said, is the court system. So this is the courts. So you can do all that, won't we? <laughs> I'll leave it there, leave it there. So, we've got the courts. What's the legislature? It's the Senate. But I'm confused with the House of Representatives. We've got the House and the Senate, but I think it's the Senate. We'll, we'll call it the Parliament, then, which is not the right. No, we'll call it the Senate. E ETE? ETE. ETE. So we'll call it the Senate, we may be the House of Representatives in there. And what's the executive branch? Yes, uh, so Octavia? Have a guess. If we've got all the all the governors and senates, not governors, senators, and all the judges, who's left? Um, the ones that execute it. Mm -hmm. The ones that execute it? Great. Shimela? Who's left? Um, the president. The president. The um, so we should really be keeping track of what's going on in the news. If you're not, you're you're missing a lot of stuff. So what does 
the president, what, what have they been doing recently? A lot of. He's been signing executive orders. So if you've heard that in the news, it's because he has the right because he's the executive. And, he, and that, that executive order is meant to be for emergency situations that can override everything. Uh, and some people claim when presidents do that, often it's an abuse of power. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so this is guy on the I'll go over. There was a whole Roman law then. I mean, is it very similar to the season? I don't even know, I don't know how this works. Oh, two. You all know his password. Um, is, this, is this a website? Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Uh, it, uh, the executive branch is the president, the vice president, um, the council of ministers, and the attorney general. It's the White House. Basically, the White House. Yeah, what we call the White House infrastructure. Uh, then the legislature is the parliament. Um, I don't know what that says. When you make some executive orders, all those people have to be in agreement. Which people? The ones you just mentioned, the vice president and the, all the White House. Members. Essentially. It's their, so it's, it's not the same as if it's as such. Well, it depends how that, how that White House system is set up. It, they, they, they call it the administration or the, the president. So essentially, it is the president drives all of that. I think the purpose of the emergency situation is also that if the president's missing, then the vice president has that power. Yeah. That's why it's the White House is more accurate than just having the president. Uh, and then the judiciary is the Supreme Court, um, the Chief of Justice, etc. Uh, the House of Representatives must just be the. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's the same as the Senate, I think mean, it's just basically where they're housed. Yeah. Know, all the politicians. Uh, you can take this back now. This was not the American one you gave me, by the way. It's an India one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, are you saying, like, I'm just going on to expand on uh, Emma's question. What was the that question? The executive branch. Is, so, that's not solely the president. It's it is. The, Essentially, it's solely the president. So, he, without those people that you just mentioned. No. Yeah, he's got advisors, but he just, he just does what he's up. The, the, the executive branch is just that one man. So, if they don't have to agree. I mean, if they. He's got this maybe five or six people around him, and if they don't agree, that like, he can make that final decision. Yeah, it's all about him. They're, they're, they're just advisors. What they do is they, it's just like even here in the UK, they would just walk away. These are ministers. You know, when they have their meetings, the ministerial meetings um, in Parliament, um, at number 10, the person who makes the decision is the Prime Minister. Everyone else can, can say we're, we're leaving the cabinet. It's what, what you'd call the cabinet. They're all familiar with what the cabinet is in UK politics. It's a similar idea as the, the administration. It's the Prime Minister that runs everything, he just tells everybody what to do. Do you refer to the cabinet or the Senate? Sorry? The courts and the Senate, you say, the cabinet? No, that would be the executive branch, the White House. Do you think? It, 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 in theory, there are others there, but they're just advisors. The executive branch, he can do what he wants, essentially. It depends how powerful in any one administration he is, because sometimes the vice president is extremely powerful compared to the president, and they might you know, be peers, and the, the president might, might not want to make decisions all by himself. He might want to consult with uh, you know, the other people that are around him. But, so it depends on the administration how powerful he, he's going to be, but he has the authority to sign and do anything he wants under these emergency situations. But he can't write law. If these are executive orders, they're not law, which, is, which causes problems. Um, if, the, if, if this, this one isn't the joint with this one. The reason I mentioned all of that um, is Alan White knows the three 
uh, branch, the three branches of the government, but she only mentions two of them. Just so that we get this clear, this one here that makes laws, and this one does what? Applies it. Yeah. They don't they're not really enforce the law in that sense. You know, if you are deemed by the police to break the law, you go to court and they decide what law you've broken, and then these people are going to implement the law that they have made. Now, she's not talking about the executive branch. So what's that teaching us about this context? Because it says, the lamb-like horns and dragon voice of, this, um, of the symbol point to a striking contradiction between the professions and the practice of the nation thus represented. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. What's that teaching us? We've mentioned it just a minute ago. Well, in, prophe <coughs> in prophecy, the executive orders are not relevant, basically. And they're not based, you, I'm guessing that's because they're not based on a principle, they haven't been through a whole process of being voted on, and so forth. The so, the fact we have executive orders is not how this thing is going to work. It's going to work through the legislature. It's going to be proper laws that are put into place. So can't you write the executive order that's now the courts and set up to decide they're going to put it in place? Yes, but they have to do... No, they don't decide anything. The courts don't decide anything. It's only, it's only the legislature. They're the ones that write laws. So they have to agree. So it's still going to be significant because you can write an executive order and then it goes to them and they say, yeah, we agree with this and they start implementing it. Mean, so, yeah, so the, the, oh, the only point I'm trying to bring up is that he, he can't write an executive order about this issue and we think, you know, we wake up one day and they're going to write some order and that's what she's talking about because she doesn't mention the executive branch, she mentions the legislature. So it has to go through due process, it has to become law. And then the courts have to implement that law. You remember there was an executive order a while ago, at the very beginning of the administration, that said uh, we're not going to process visas. That wasn't a law, it was an executive order. Uh, and so what happened? It was challenged in the courts and it was found to be not legal. So it didn't come to any effect. So, all, all we want to pick up is that she's talking about here the Sunday law time period, and when that happens, it's this is this this is the thing that's going to do everything. The reason why it's interesting to know that is because when you see what's happening in America at the moment, you see that the dynamics don't look that way. It looks like everything's coming from the executive branch, and the legislature is not doing anything. So, I'm not saying that won't be the case, um, but we have to keep an eye, an eye on, what, on what actually is going on. So, does that guard against dictatorship? Not really. Does what guard against dictatorship? Uh, uh, the this system. Legislative. Yes, the system is to guard against that. It's to guard against executive power. But it depends upon what. It only works if you have a strong legislature. If you have a strong government, then you can uh, have these checks and balances. If you don't have a strong government, you can just put them into an arm lock and get them to do whatever you want. But isn't executive power going to be done when the papacy takes well, that, that, If you see the passage, she never speaks about it in that context. It's always the legislature that's doing this work, not the executive branch. It's hidden, essentially. Yeah. But so, he says to the Hebrews who heeds them will. Where does it say that? So the legislature yeah. will yeah. yeah. um, I'm not familiar with what those. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody say something? It's made a comment that the legislature was made of those prostate questions. I don't think so. I think it's still mixed. So these spirits uh, are speaking because that's what that's what that's what you do out of your mouth. 
is the words. And what words are these? Laws. These are laws. So these laws or these words, they're going to come out and do what? What's going to happen to them? Or what, what effect are they going to have? You're going to go to the kings. You're going to go to the kings. He says, um, but these are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the great get into the battle, that great day of God Almighty. So the purpose of all of these words, all these laws, is to gather all the kings together, and who else? The people. And of the whole world, so it's the kings and the whole world, two of those. Uh, we know that, if you keep your finger there and you go to 17, Revelation 17, Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk. So can we see that? In, can we see the connection between 16, 16 14 and 17, 2? How we connect the ghosts together? Um, because it's the kings and the subjects. So in 17 it says what? The kings and the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, so it says kings and inhabitants. And in uh, 16, 14. It says kings and the whole world. Can we see that? So I'm saying I think that's enough evidence to show that the whole earth is talking about the people or the inhabitants. I don't know if we're all happy with that. With that logic. So the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are all going to come to the kings and they're going to do what? What are they going to do? Deception. They're going to deceive them in some way to prepare them or to gather them to the great day of God Almighty. So what is that great day? I, I, I saw your hand. Sunday, the day of the Lord. Okay, where are they going to be gathered? Can we all see that? Because if you drop down two verses to 16, it tells you where they're going to be gathered. Are we okay with that? So, uh, Brother Tom? Um, it's just in regards to the... to this, the spirits coming out of the... That the beast and the false prophet being the laws. Um, and White has um, a quote in the Great Controversy where she makes an allusion to the Holy Spirit working through laws as well. In the Great Controversy. Show us that one. Uh, great Controversy 6, 10, paragraph 3. GC 6, 10.3. Okay, so we're going to go back to 6.13 and we're looking at GC 610.3 So this is interesting because it's the paragraph just before uh, uh, GC 6.11 which is a famous one that we use all the time This is 610.3. But so long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary above, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is felt by rulers and people, still controls to some extent the laws of the land. 
Were it not for these laws, the condition of the world would be much worse than it is now. Um, God has his agents among the leading men of the nation. And they're going to help, they're going to hold in check this great... Uh, Problem. Okay, so that's a nice passage, I like that one. So, in summary, we can say that the Holy Spirit controls laws and these spirits of devils also control laws. They make non effective laws, don't they? Non effective? No, they make laws. That make non effective the royal law. Yes, yes. Um, I don't even know, I thought I thought I heard you asking the question, what's the purpose of this seeking? Yes, and the answer is to gather the kings yeah. to Armageddon. Yeah, okay. So that's the purpose of it. They're gonna they're gonna speak something and they're gonna gather them to Armageddon. Um now, we've gone ahead of the lesson itself because she's going to talk about Armageddon, but we may or may not get there. Where would you place Armageddon? You've got this gathering of the kings to Armageddon. Which, and it says Armageddon is the, great, the battle of the great day. So there's a battle uh, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God. So the the great day of God is when that battle is going to happen and the place that it happens is Armageddon. So when is Armageddon? Where would we place that? The great day of God. Daniel 12, 1. So you're saying that the dragon, the beast and the false prophet are all creating laws. They're all, going to, they're all whispering into the ears of the kings and saying you need to all gather to when Michael stands up, that's when we need to gather. That's that's what you're saying, yeah. And now you're saying no. Yeah, no, because by that time all the laws are already in place. So yeah, but no, nothing. You just said that. I'm not saying that. You Sorry? said you said, well, you said well, Michael stands up. Yeah, but then you said all the kings are going to come together and say let's make these laws. It's, I'll, I'll read it again. It said. No, no, the kings are not making laws. No. I, I didn't say that. I, I, I said, no, it says, these things, these three things, they're doing something to gather the kings together. And I asked, okay. yeah. when is the gathering? When is that time when you said, when Michael stands up? Yeah. So they're all saying to the kings, I want all of you to go to Armageddon yeah. and gather together there. So we know where they're gathering, it's Armageddon. Yeah. So my question is, when are they gathering? And you said when Michael stands up. That's when they're going to gather together. You can stay with that. Okay. Anyone else? Grace. He's got the people gathering together for the close of probation for Michael stands up. Is that, is that where you place they're all coming together? Before that. Um, when and then why? When? When before? Okay. At Sunday look, you say that. Okay. So she's she's saying um, they've been whispered to for all the kings to gather at the Sunday law. So that's uh, when. Why? Okay, so you've you're, you're got all the kings being gathered for the Sunday law, so you're saying Armageddon is that Sunday law. I was just thinking it's before the close of probation, but around the Sunday law time period, in that place exactly, but around there. Um... Well, you, because we want to put it on the line, so as soon as you put it on the line, you have to sort of be some kind of specificity to it. It has to be, you know, some accuracy. When you say sort of around, yeah. 
So if I say the great day of God, what is the great day of God? But where would the day begin? Okay, so you wouldn't. So you. So if, if you're going to gather for that great day, you'd be, you'd be all gathered at the beginning of the day. Uh, Rob Thomas, she says Sunday, Lord. This gathering of Armageddon is, is a battle. It's a battle that's taking place. The Sunday laws is not a battle. It's, it's, it's basically a, a, a judicial gathering, if you want to use that expression. Or, or a, a judicial gathering. gathering? I don't know what that means. So, so the Sunday law is a political gathering, a political getting together. It's not, it's, not, it's not something that immediately is going to be detrimental to us, whereas Armageddon is. is there's devastation, there's, there's going to be problems there, or bloodshed there. So, um, okay, no, I'm, just, I'm not saying that, I'm just listening. Yeah, can I read something? Oh, what? Yeah. It's, um, it's probably fine out of place, but it's 1BIO 151.4. It's what? 1BIO <laughs> Bible is volume 1. 151.4. Or maybe 151. 151.4. Yes. Yeah. It says, angels are holding the four wings. It is God that restrains the powers. The angels have not let go, for the saints are not in the When Michael stands up, this trouble will be all over the earth. Why? They are just ready to blow. So I think that's from Armageddon, when Michael stands up. And she's talking about destruction taking place. So you're saying Armageddon, but, but you're just making the connection to Armageddon, you didn't say Armageddon. No, 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 sorry, I'm just making the connection, I'm just giving some adjectives to describe what's taking place at Armageddon. Okay, so you're saying the great day of God is when Michael stands up. You're calling it the great day of God. No, I'm not calling it. It says, verse 14, the great day of God. It says it in the verse. I'm not making that up. So where are you? 16, 14. It says the great day of God. I assume you have. Oh, I see you're saying. Okay. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm just saying, this is the great day of God. The great day of God is the battle of Armageddon. And you're making that Michael standing up. So the great day of God is when Michael stands up. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I'll, I'll run with those thoughts for now because I think we can have the great day of God at different, at different parts. Different parts? Yeah. Which other parts? Well, in the case of Sunday. So you think the great day of God is Sunday, though? Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, you can agree with her then? No, but I said that you can have it at different parts. You can have it at the Sunday. You can have a great day of God at the Sunday, but at the Sunday long. But also, yes, in the verse it does say a great day of God, and Armageddon is a great day of God according to that verse. And I'm saying, but Armageddon is is damaged for one, so yeah, so that would be a great day of God as well. Okay. Robert Richard. Well, I thought the Catholic Armageddon was to prevent the last. Loosing of Islam. Sorry, the what? The last loosing of Islam because there's four holes. There's, there's loosings and restraints, loosings and restraints. The last, the last of the marital stands up, there's no restraint. So, but then, you know, they enter into their council and seek deep to hide their. You've got to give me some spirit of prophecy quotes and you can't, you can't just do what you're doing. <coughs> because um, you just, what, you just look like. It, 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 revelation, it, it, it says, neither repent the day of their murders nor of their sorcery nor of their fornication, nor of their death. Uh, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold. I don't know where you're reading from, sorry. Revelation 9. What's the connection you're making? I'm lost. But, well, but they, they come together to. I'm just asking where what event is that? Where are they gathering? Where is Armageddon? It's uh, 
Where is it? Well, it's, it's in America, isn't it? Could it be? Not the, the proper jail. Sunday law, close probation, it's somewhere else. Sunday law. It's in, it's, in the, it's in the short space, the Bible hour. What Bible hour? From the Sunday law to the, the microphone dinner. So it's at the Sunday law then? Yes, within that time frame. So you're agreeing with Sister Grace now? I thought it was more like what Thomas said. Thomas said, close of probation. Yeah. And you're saying Sunday law? Well, there's not four loosens before the Sunday law, is there? And five, no. I don't know, I'm just asking. Yeah, it's, it's give me the answer one. first before you give me the proof. Just tell I, me I, think it's in the, I believe it's in the Sunday law time period. Yeah, I don't know why people keep saying in the Sunday law time period. The Sunday law is a way mark. Yeah, but we've already had a prophetic Sunday law in 2014, so we're already in that period. No, we're not. What, they're making, they're going about implementing their Sundays? No, they're not. What do you mean they're not? They're just not. No, what do you she, she, what, what this passage you're talking they, about, they, they, We've even told we're not even supposed to say they're going to be implementing because it's already written down. The um, 18 Jones where he says it's already written on the book. So then none of this makes sense if you're going to go back to 1888. I don't understand what you're saying now. No, but the, 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 we're not to say to people they're going to, the Sunday, the Sunday Law's coming, the Sunday Law's already here, it's already written down. It's just not been brought to life, those three executive, the, the judicial, legislative and executive branch, but to prevent it from coming alive. But, so what's going to happen there, where it comes alive, and then there's going to be some loosens, restraints, loosen restraints. Okay, I need to stop it. I'm just asking a simple question. Where are you placing verse 13 and verse 16? Out of where? Out of... Revelation 16. Where, where are you placing that? Grace is saying Sunday law. Thomas is saying close the probation. And you're saying... It's going to be... Well, because... So just give me the answer. I'm not asking you why. I don't, I don't, really, I don't, I don't know. So you don't know where to place it? Um, it's going to be... Just give me the thing, not before, what, just tell me when it is, not what it's before. Like if you want to place it at 9 11 or whatever you want to place it, just give me the way mark. Uh, all right. Um, just another thought, but I think it's when the Sunday law is going around the whole world to all nations. Verse 41? Yeah. Okay, so you place it at Sunday law. But the, yes. The problem I'm having is that it's written contextually in between the 6th and 7th plate, which is after the 10th of 1. And then we know that there's a death decree after the close of probation. That's I don't know how you want to word it. Sunday law death decree or something. There's a death decree if you mark it at the close of probation, yeah. Okay. So perhaps it's talking about that stage of the Sunday law because it is uh, written between the 6th and 7th plane, which is then to a one or afterwards. So, you, so you're going to use the contextual uh, place that it's written to say that so. it's going to be after close of probation? I think so because I know Revelation is not written chronologically, but these seven places are written out chronologically, and this gathering is placed in between the sixth and the seventh. It doesn't look like it goes back in time and then back to the seventh place. So I'm wondering now. Okay, so if you're going to do that, so if, you're to, if you're going to do that, then uh, verse yeah. twelve: the sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates and dried it up. Yeah. So you're going to say that is after close of probation. Oh, yeah. And then you're going to say that the three unclean spirits are going to start writing laws after the close of probation. Yeah, well, there is a death decree law after the close of probation. So that's the one that it's referring to? Um, just, that's just like, I'm just wondering basically. I mean, that's how it would fit, but I don't know if everything else fits, if you do that. Okay. Brother Thomas. So, I think, I think the pastor proved to say that, um, Revelation 16, verse, um, um, verse 60 is, is when Michael turns up. 
Okay, so you're going to say Armageddon needs close of probation. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Point five. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Okay. Sorry? It starts with the battle of Armageddon. 7BC 9882. There are only two parties in our world. Those who are loyal to God and those who stand under the banner of the Prince of Darkness. Satan and his angels will come down with power and signs and light wonders to deceive those who dwell on the earth, and if possible, the very elect. The crisis is right upon us. This is to paralyze the energies of those who have a knowledge of the truth. So is this to paralyze the energies of those who have knowledge of the truth? Is the influence of the powers of deception so far reaching that the influence of the truth will be overpowered? The battle of Armageddon is soon to be fought. He on whose vesture is written the name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, leads forth the armies of heaven on white horses clothed in fine linen, clean and white. It's a different passage, so I can't read it, it has to stop there. Because that's in this, uh, it's a different passage. So I'll read it again. Is it the last great final contest? No, yeah, but it's, it's another passage. There are only two parties in our world, those who are loyal to God and those who stand under the banner of the Prince of Darkness. Satan's angels will come down with great power and signs and lying wonders to deceive those who dwell on the earth, and if possible, the very elect. The crisis is right upon us. It is to paralyze energies of those who have a knowledge of the truth. It is the influence of the powers of the deception so far reaching that the influence of the truth will be overpowered. The battle of Armageddon is soon to be fought. He on whose vesture is written the name King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, leads forth the armies of heaven on white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. So you're saying. Yeah, the point is when someone's in order to lead forth an army, you need to be standing up to go to war. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in order for this battle of Armageddon to be fought, he who leads the armies is, is Christ when he stands up. So the crisis that's right upon us that might paralyze our energies, mm -hmm. um, the deception is so far reaching that the influence of the truth will be overpowered that the very elect might be deceived. All of this is after the close of probation. No, that's before. But then she says the Battle of Armageddon, you're saying the Battle of Armageddon is after that? Or it is that? No, it's after that, it has to be after that. Well, it says there are only two parties in our world, yeah. which are the two parties that are gonna fight in the Battle of Armageddon, isn't it? Isn't it contextually that's what it says? It says those who stand under the banner of Prince of Darkness and those who stand on Christ's side. So you've got the two armies, and it says the crisis is right upon us, the battle is right upon us. So if you're going to make the previous paragraph, all that crisis and all that battle, those two parties, if you're going to make that pre close of probation, this passage is proving that our again is pre close of probation. Not, this is not sequential, it's repeat and enlarged. Lying wonders, you know, lying wonders, Revelation 13. So it's actually taking, she's, she's taking you through Daniel 11 very, very concisely, and then to end Daniel 11 is, is, is Daniel 12 points. How does anybody else read that? Yeah, I think from what I've been reading, um, it's a bit difficult to, to, to place it for me. Because even the next paragraph... Every form of evil? Yeah, it says... The problem with every form of evil, it's not the same passage. It's letter 112. Yeah, so I'm reading this as a different... Uh, as a different quote to, to the one. Okay. I'll just give you a quotation. Just comment, comment on this one first, then. 
Crisis is right upon us. Yeah, the crisis of the and then it says Armageddon is so soon to be fought. Yeah, but, but it's not. It's the crisis. We're in a crisis. The day the Lord of God. No, we're not in a crisis. Thing, but they're not the same thing. Armageddon and this crisis is not the same thing. You don't think it's the same thing? No, Armageddon is a, 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 a future from what is described in here. A little bit future. That's what I, how I see You've it. got future, then more future. Not much more future. No, I'm not trying to move the way Mark's future. No, you are, no, I'm not saying talking about how far. I'm saying you've got one future crisis, you've then got, you've got Armageddon after this. Yeah, you've got crisis where all this... All this because the crisis is, is it's a, Satan's miracles will eventually turn their influence what, against the truth. What are these three parties doing? They're fighting. No, they're not. Or they're standing. They're not fighting. Oh, well, they're opposing each other. They're, they're on opposite sides. Preparing to fight. Yeah, they're preparing and, to uh, fight. Is the crisis the preparation? Is the crisis the fight? The great... Yeah. The, the crisis is right upon us. Is that yeah. the fight? Yeah, that's the Armageddon crisis. Final, great final crisis. That's what I'm saying. You, you disagreed then that the passive paragraph before, paragraph 4, is paragraph 5. Because it says the crisis is right upon us. Okay, so the crisis can be Armageddon. That's what I'm asking. That's, that's what you're saying. Yeah, but you just help clarify. Dr. Tom? You can see that a bit better. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, when you put the two together, it says that there's a crisis that's coming, and it just says it in another way to cause it to back up at Armageddon. Um, and it Fine. mentions in this time that Satan and the angels will come down with uh, the lying mothers to deceive uh, those um, who don't have the same capacity as possible, the very elect. And from my understanding, this will not happen after Daniel 12, but 1, because everybody's already deceived and unseen by that time. There's nothing, there's no point for Satan to deceive people who are already on his side at that time. Um, so it has to be happening before. And, and like you said, sometimes we read into it and, and we say, okay, um, this is a plague, so it must be happening after close of probation. But when you read Revelation 16, there's a lot of um, applications before the close of probation to the things that, that we read in there. Because otherwise we'll, we'll start saying that all the deceptions and all the laws are taking place after the close of probation, when it's, it's too late then. In fact, the, um, the, if you understand Revelation 17, uh, from my understanding, 16 or 17? 17. The, the ten kings killed the, the woman by the, by the king at the close of probation. So you don't actually have this um, the threefold union as brought to view in, um, in, verse, in chapter 16 after the close of probation. So it, we must uh, apply it um, correctly. Okay, so let me summarise that. Well, for Thomas, at the close of probation, the ten kings are going to go and eat her flesh. No? When? I'm not saying that. I'm saying from the close of probation yeah. onward, they're going to start. Okay. Well, well, well see, uh, okay, so if you're, not, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to say 1798. Is a fixed point in time. No, I don't need to do that. But just the only reason I'm, I'm not sure it would actually work is that when you're saying there's no three for union afterwards because they've all fallen out and they're killing each other. But there is a death decree, so there is some unity for a time where they say let's have let's turn the sun and into a death decree and the penalty's death. So they're so suffering so the plagues, and I think they can stay the plagues by. What I'm trying to do is. We've got way marks, Sunday law, close of probation. Are we talking about this history or this history? I think it's after the close of probation. There's a couple of passages in there. Okay, so you're saying it's there, and Robert Tommy's saying here, and Grace is saying here. 
Thomas is saying here. No, I'm saying from that stick onwards. From the this one. Stick. Yeah, from that point. Yeah, because I'm saying in this history. But Grace is saying this history. This is Armageddon. You're saying this is Armageddon. Yeah. And so to me, it seemed to me in this passage, there are two parties in our world. Um, the crisis that she, I thought she's talking about was the cellular crisis, which she then goes on to say is Armageddon. No, no, well, so the crisis that she's talking about is, is, is the deception that the very elect could be deceived by when Christ, when Satan comes to impersonate Christ, etc., etc., and this Sunday law problem. But then she goes But then she then, but then the next, then she says the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah, so she's yeah, using the Battle of Armageddon to superimpose that that is the crisis that she's talking about. No, I don't think so. She, she's so you're not seeing this as a repeat in a lie, just no, I'm saying, you're no. seeing this as sequential. Yeah, and, she, and then she ends with Armageddon. I've got another quote to ask this It seems from the verses to me that it's, it's saying that this Which chapter verses? 16, 16, 14 to 16. The original question, one of the questions you asked was, when is this gathering? And that's when Grace answered the Sunday before. Uh, it seems there's a distinction between the gathering and the battle, but it's labelling them as Armageddon. Because it says, the spirits of devils working miracles go forth to the kings of the earth to gather them to the great day of to the battle of that great day. So there's this gathering going on, which seems to me a process, to the end in the battle. But you gather them together under a place called Armageddon. So the gathering is marked as Armageddon, which I think you have to say is Sunday Law. The gathering. The gathering. is gathering the kings from Sunday Law, because Sunday Law is when mm. these spirits of devils are going forth, because that's the laws being passed. Yeah. So this is the gathering of the king. And if you link that to this... No, no, wait, there, that's going too fast. In 6.13, you're going to get all these kings gathering. Yeah. So they go into a place. Which place are they going to? Armageddon. Okay, so by the time you're ever you're going to place that Armageddon, they've all gathered. So where do you place Armageddon? So you're placing Armageddon here. Yeah. And, that's based and you're placing Armageddon here. Based on the fact there's a gathering, and the gathering is brought about by the spirits of devils working miracles, who are these unclean spirits that come out of the mouth of the dragon beast and the spirits. They're passing the laws, which is gathering these people together. Everyone agrees that the gathering is pre Armageddon. So you're putting the gathering here that leads you to Armageddon. No, I'm saying that a gathering is marked by staying they're gathering at a place called Armageddon, and this is a process of Armageddon. It starts at Sunday Law where they gather, and then the battle escalates yeah, through that time. But the gathering, they must all be starting to walk and gather together to a place. We use the same methodology uh, for the Proud of the Ten Virgins. They leave home and they all gather to the house. So by the time you get to April the 19th, they are gathered there, but they've been gathering. That's partly question, partly statement. This is the gathering time period, and now everything's gathered, and now the battle begins. I think that's what you're saying, or not. You can't have this. You can't have the gathering after the battle, can you? Okay, uh, Brother Aaron, if you have some co um, passages. Yes. Sorry, I'll wait there. Okay, sorry. Where are we? Uh, 1613. Yes. Okay, so we're in 1613. 7BC 983.1, so it's just a bit below what we were just reading. 9.83. Satan mustering his forces for the last great battle. The present is a solemn fearful time for the church. The angels are already girded, awaiting the mandate of God to pour their vials of wrath upon the world. Destroying angels are taking up the work of vengeance, for the Spirit of God is gradually withdrawing from the world. Satan is also mustering his forces of evil, going forth 
and to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them under his banner to be trained for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Satan is to make most wonderful, sorry, make most powerful efforts for the mastery in the last great conflict. Fundamental principles will be brought out and decisions made in regard to them. Skepticism is prevailing everywhere, ungodliness abounds. The faith of individual members of the church will be tested as though they were not another person in the world. Uh, what chapter is this, by the way? This is 16. It says chapter 12, 12. That's the only reason I'm asking. Or am I going to be that? No, it's, the context is Revelation 16. But it was some time in 12-12. Yeah, it's a sort of a cross-reference. Just like the next paragraph is commenting on Revelation 14. I can't tell you what 12-12 was. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and in the world of the captains of the earth, and see the devil has come down to have a great wrath, and he has come down to have a short wrath. So 11-11 is the start of the Okay, so what are you saying this is teaching us? Right. It, it is. It happens under the violence being called. Yeah, I'm just getting her the middle of it, which is that there's this process of gathering under his banner to be trained for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So, this gathering, which leads up to the battle, I was saying gathering Sunday long, which leads up to the battle. Sorry? I don't, I don't I know, know what, you, what, you, what you mean when you say the gathering. But I think that's been. You, Qualified the government before that. No, I might be wrong, I'm, asking, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I was seeing that this is a process that as they're gathering them to the battle, that the gathering is part of Armageddon because of their labelling, because of the verses labelling they're gathered at Armageddon. So I'm saying that gathering, this gathering process is this crisis which is Sunday or onwards. Which so how can you be gathering after Armageddon? Because our concept, my concept of Armageddon is it's just the last battle, and I'm saying I don't think that's. I think our concept of Armageddon is a point in this period. That's, that's what I'm seeing. Wait, it says it's a day. The last hour, however, someone's put that. The hour, the day of the Lord. We say Sunday Lord's Preservation, that's the day of the Lord, that's the last hour. That's... No, it's not an hour, it says the day, great day, yeah, not hour. Day, but we also the hour. Yeah, but we're not using the hour, that's another chapter. Okay. So, so, so tell me where the gathering is. Gathering is a period of time? Yeah. So it begins before Sunday law and ends at the Sunday law? No, it's around Sunday law. I don't know what around Sunday law means. Sunday law is a So you're gathering before Armageddon? That was how I was reading it. If you're gathering before Armageddon, you're putting gathering here. So how can you be at Armageddon before you gather? That's what I'm saying about this concept of Armageddon. I think it's, it's progressive, it's a period, it's they gather. At Armageddon, it says they gather at Armageddon, so I'm labeling Armageddon as, as a place where they gather and then the battle takes place. So it's like a two step process. Yes, yeah, well, I've put an A, so it I'm says. I'm not marking Armageddon, but you're not, I'm not marking the battle that's in the It says A, the battle. So I put an A is battle. That's what that A is supposed to represent. That's what, I think that's, that's what we would do, isn't it? It says the battle. So I want to put, where's the battle? I can change it to B if you want. Where are you placing the battle? I was close to So you've shifted. But I don't think, yeah. No, I'm going to put it something or I'm going to move it back. It's, it's, a, it's a crisis that goes on in that time period. It escalates to full release of the winds at close of probation. I mean, that's. I don't know if that what that term what you're trying to say. I'm just trying to keep it simple. All I want to know is. The gathering is a period of time, and Armageddon is a period of time, because it's the day. So all I, want to know, all I want to know is where Armageddon begins, and when the gathering, if it is only the beginning, the gathering must end as Armageddon starts. It seems to me you're trying to say, they keep on gathering and Armageddon's already begun. It's not my model, that's what you're saying. You can't yeah, say what I'm saying. I'm, 
Well, that's why I'm trying to push you to try to tell me what you are saying. Because I've seen a distinction between, I've seen a two-step process labelled Armageddon, but I think you're saying the battle is Armageddon, so I'm saying, okay, if the battle no, is Armageddon. I, 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 how do you read that? It says, they to gather them Armageddon. together to a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So they're gathering to this place. Yeah, so if we go back to the previous verse, it says, verse 14, For they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go to the kings, to gather them to the battle. So you can't have a battle unless you're gathered. No, it's the whole process of gathering them. It's taking place at the gathered battle. I was seeing Sunday laws labelled as Armageddon, so they've gathered at Sunday law, they're gathering at this place Armageddon and Sunday law. These are the laws that are being passed, but they've also been passed before, so it's probably more accurate to say the gathering is before, and now they're at Armageddon and Sunday law. Um, Aaron, so you, you're doing you're going back to this one. You've got some passages. Well, she always seems to think Armageddon with the pouring out of the vials. Where are we now? Well, in the one that we were just in. The present is a solemn, fearful time for the church. The angels are already girded, awaiting the mandate of God to pour their vials of wrath upon the world. So that's the seven last plagues. Destroying angels are taking up the work of vengeance, for the Spirit of God is gradually withdrawing from the world. Satan is also mustering his forces of evil, going forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them under his banner, to be trained for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Satan is to make powerful efforts for the mastery in the last great conflict. Fundamental principles will be brought out and decisions made in regard to them. Skepticism, okay, so the same thing there. So, what is the last great conflict? Seems like it's Armageddon. Yeah, but what, what is it in, is it close of probation or is it Sunday law? This is not answering the question, it's just, you've got to watch the time. Oh, okay. it's two minutes until four o'clock. So, okay. uh, you will finish in five, five minutes. Yeah. Um, I just want, I just wanted to say that she's talking about when vials are being poured out, and then describes Armageddon, basically. But then, just because it was short of time, this one's kind of more pointed, and then it gets difficult. <laughs> she okay, says, so this is seven BC as well. So this is. Uh, MS-175. It's got a text of reference, not MS-175. 7 BC. 7 BC, 983, paragraph 2. Oh, just the next one. It's the next one down. Uh, the armies of God take the field. Sorry. Yeah? That's what wrong. We need to study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. We need to study the pouring out of the seventh vial. The powers of evil will not yield up the conflict without a struggle, but providence has a part to act in the battle of Armageddon. When the earth is lighted with the glory of the angel of Revelation 18, the religious elements, good and evil, will awake from slumber and the armies of the living God will take the field. So what do we do with that? So what I'm thinking is that she's already talked about Armageddon being when the vials are being poured out and she does it somewhere else as well, which we haven't looked at. But now she actually says the seventh time. Yeah. And that matches with where it's placed in the biblical text, in between the sixth and the seventh. So it seems like Armageddon happens under the seventh plane. Then, of course, you'd argue that, well, the earth is light and the glory of the angel of Revelation 18 also. Yeah. But you could say that she's going back and, you know, telling you what happened before. But it's pretty clear that Armageddon. It's pretty clear that Armageddon is being put under the we need, seventh plane. We need to study the pouring out of the seventh vial. The powers of evil will not yield up the conflict without a struggle. But providence has a part to act in the battle of Armageddon. When the earth is lighted with the glory of the angel of Revelation 18, the religious elements, good and evil, will awake from slumber and the armies of the living God will take the field. Okay, so that's... So how do you read that? So she's saying over the, 
on the seventh plague, you have the Battle of Armageddon. And at the Sunday law, when the earth is lightened with his glory, is when they awake to get ready for this battle. But I don't see how you can get away with trying to say it doesn't happen on the seventh plague. So, when Revelation 18 comes down, two religious powers are going to wake up from sleep and they're going to take the field. Taking the field means what? Uh, like when you get traditionally into all so they're going to be, like they gather. So they're all going to be gathering. So the gathering now seems to be the Sunday. Now you put it that way. So now they're going to be um, taking the field, they're going to be gathering to the field for Armageddon, which happens under the seventh plane. What I haven't said is I, I wrote something that I think makes it missing impossible. Sorry, which says what? Well, just, it just agrees with what he just said. Okay. Um, yep. That's um, SDA Bible Commentary 7, it's got two semicolons, 9, 6, 7. <coughs> what was that? Or so, um, SDA Bible Commentary 7, I think it's points 9, 6, 7. Yes, yeah, so the 7 BC. Yes, yeah, 7 BC, oh, right, 7 BC, and 9, 6, 7. So the nations in conflict. Nine six seven paragraph what? Sorry? It's nine six seven. This is called the Mexican Nations in conflict. Give me some words. Um, four mighty angels hold back the powers of Okay, so this is uh Angels hands linked about the world. John writes, I beheld and, heard, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. Angels were united in the work of him who had broken the seals and taken the book. Four mighty angels hold back the power of this earth till the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. The nations of the world are eager for conflict, but they are held in check by the angels. When this restraining power is removed, there will come a time of trouble and anguish. Deadly instruments of warfare will be invented. Vessels with their living cargo will be entombed in the great deep. All who have not the spirit of truth will unite under the leadership of satanic agencies, but they are to be kept under control till the time shall come for the, for the great day of Armageddon. And that same what? So Adam was talking about these angels falling out of the fire, and these angels are holding back uh, the bricks, um, the wings, and they're holding back until the battle of the wine So there's a great destruction that takes place um, at the latter time, but it's not happening yet because we're not at that at all. Okay, anyone else got any comments before we close? Sister Grace. Can we link this to Ezekiel 37? Um, when you say this... The, the, what we're discussing, the gathering, because obviously there's these two armies that are going to come face to face, and obviously Ezekiel 37 brings out God's army coming together, and obviously um, got the four wings being referenced to in verse 9. That reads the problem, but obviously this is prior to the Sunday war, but um, we're obviously become a great army, and by the Sunday war, this great army face to face, perhaps Sunday war just falls over the Okay, and I was thinking uh, Proverbs 48, no, Psalms 48, which says the kings are gathered. Well, if we know, we can make an application at 911, but we can make an application at the Sunday. They're certainly not gathered, or are we saying that that, that gathering of those kings is at the close of probation? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I always thought it would be four. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11, 44. So he's going up with great fury. He's not like a great battle. He's gathering all the things with this great fury because his time that the east, and that links in then with Revelation 18 with this great glory, great light. And then verse 45 comes to his end. So maybe this great battle of again is, is, is that, or the gathering, at least it's 44, Daniel 11, 44. Uh, Brother Tom. Yeah, I just wanted to say a quick comment on, on the passage that Sister Emma read. It, talking about the battle of Armageddon, it said that principles were brought out and decisions were being made. So I'm not sure what, uh, what kind of weight that that puts on it, whether the big decisions made after the close of probation. And also the one after that, it talks about the seventh fire. So what, what's the point you're making there? That she, she read the seventh. She read. She read uh, nine eight three point two. Point one. Nine eight three point one. Not point two. No, it's point one. Satan is going. Then I'm just going to train. is to make the most powerful efforts to the master of the last great conflict. Fundamental principles will be brought out and decisions made in regard to them. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Uh, skeptic. Okay, so what are you saying there? So, um, I'm not sure if that, those decisions are being made before or after, that, that may affect where we replace it. Because I think after the close of probation, there's not going to be any decisions made. That's why there'll be no martyrs, there'll be no martyrs. They decide to pass a death decree. That's already consistent with the faith, so. I think they make the decision before the chosen probation. It's not really because the faith is evil for now. You see, we know we've got to rid the earth of these people. It's really bad. Okay, so it's after the chosen probation. We're making decisions after the chosen probation. We don't want to just sit down and wait for Jesus to death. Things are really happening. So what's the point you make? No, I think it's, it's saying fundamental principles. I'm not sure that, I think that's a combination of the principles already chosen before. So you're not making any decisions on fundamental principles. You're already... I don't know why it places in the same play with the service of the world. It's just a specific thing. It's just a very good And then I was just going to grace the point. You mentioned Ezekiel 37. Um, and I think it's, it would be a good place to look at, not now, we don't have time, but because uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 talk about um, Gog and Magog and the value of Tido, and I think that's where the symbolism of Armageddon is brought from. So it sounds like Ezekiel 37, 38, 39 is um, referenced at least in. Um, Okay, just a small point then. Uh, what does Armageddon mean? Uh, well, it's you, you can only sort of make a guess at it. Because there's no make a guess. Word. So Ha can mean mountain. Okay. And Megiddo can. <coughs> some people will say it's church or congregation. Well, Megiddo is a place. Yeah, but it, yeah. Megiddo is a literal valley in Israel. Yeah, where people have battles. Yeah. And so what is the mountain or the hill of Megiddo? Um, it's um, Jezebel and Carmel. Yeah, Carmel. So the Battle of Armageddon is Carmel. Oh, yeah. And it's in the valley. It, it's, yeah. Megiddo is, is the valley. Yeah, it's the plain. It's, it's, the, it's, 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 it's the mountain of that place. Um, so is this is this Mount Carmel, the Battle of Armageddon? Um, Armageddon means the Hill of Megiddo. If you look back into the word, uh, Megiddo is a place where they have battles. Normally, Josiah dies there, and I think Ahab dies there. But there's a there's a hill, and the, the, the hill is that mountain. It's Carmel, Mount Carmel, geographically. Yeah. Mike Carmel is the mountain of Megiddo. You know, when they take the when they take the false prophets down into the the brook or something and they kill them, they're taking them down to Megiddo to slaughter them. Um, 
That's my understanding. So where did they gather them? What's my comment? Is that different from... Was that a piece of work symbolic then? So they're all, they're all gathering to Mount Carmel. So we normally place um, Mount Carmel, that fight, at Sunday Law, which would mean that would be where the battle is. Perhaps. Or... Well, the gathering, I'm thinking, is at the Sunday Law, because she says it's when the earth is lightened with his glory that they take the field, which is the gathering. So, are they, by the time you get to Mount Carmel and they're all gathered there, yeah. is the fight on Carmel? Is that Armageddon? Well, in the story of uh, Elijah, it is. But the plane of Megiddo, if you're going to, if you're going to say it's relevant, because some people say it isn't, then it's on the plane. On the plane? Yeah, because Megiddo is the plane, yes. and then you've got the mountain. So Elijah had to fight on the mountain. But in Revelation, Megiddo is the plane. So in other words, in scripture there's two, two battles, and which is true, because the Sunday law is one battle, and Armageddon, the seventh plane, is another battle. So the, there's a battle on the, on the mountain? Well, there's a battle on the mountain, you know, from Elijah, and it seems like... But there's a Sunday law. There's a Sunday law, and there's a battle on the plane, if you're going to say the middle of Armageddon. Yeah, but you would say Megiddo is Armageddon, you say Armageddon is the hill of Megiddo. Um, no, Megiddo is the hill. Armageddon oh, is the hill or the mountain of Megiddo. You're right, sorry, you're right. So if it's hard because he doesn't say Megiddo, he says the mountain of Megiddo. Right. Everyone else thinks it's in the battle in the plane, don't they? You know, Protestants. They think it's a literal battle. The reason is because that's where you have the battle, you don't have battles on the mountain. Right, because they think it's a literal battle. Yeah, so no one's going to fight on Mount Carmel because Megiddo is the place to have battles. Yeah. But because it's symbolic, it's talking about Elijah's battle. Which is the same place as he wanted to summon him, which would be true. Sister Emma, close. Because in that story there's the battle on Carmel and there's yeah. the slaughter, which I think... Because that's the other thing that I was going to say that she picked up now, is that if they don't slaughter them on Carmel, they take them down to slaughter them. Oh. This is what I'm trying to say. Sorry? I think that's what I'm trying to say. Putting it's, it's too She doesn't say it clearly. I know, we're still formulating it. <laughs> but I'm trying to pick up on it. That's what, sorry? Sorry. No, I didn't want to pick up on it. I wanted you to develop it. Yeah. Because it needs to, I wanted us to, you know, we were saying something to place it where we're, where we're saying it. Where are we? We're running out of time. We're <laughs> We don't know where to place it. Yeah. All I want to say is, um, the more you look, the more you realise how little we know. <laughs> True. Which is, I think, um, humbling in a positive sense. So I'm hoping, that even if we haven't come to any major conclusions, bits and pieces that we have learned have helped us to become stronger in our faith and, and more than that it's given us a desire to maybe go back and look at these things more carefully to really consider what we're going to what the scriptures are actually teaching us about this event uh, the reason why this is important is because whatever you're going to do here you bring this back into our history and if that's so we're already in the battle of Armageddon yeah. Today, if, if that's if you, if you want to do this, when you, you bring it back into our history, the history of the priests, so it, had, it does have a, a, an impact upon us. Yeah. Do, you, do, you want, do you want to say something? No? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We ask and pray for a blessing uh, upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the um, privilege of being able to come together to study your word. Um, you've nourished and strengthened us through your word, even though we may not have come to a conclusion, Lord. The fact that we open your word and discuss is important. As we recognise our weakness and our frailty, Lord, help us to have humility. 
help us to see that there are still so many things that we need to learn and perhaps even unlearn. We also want to ask for a blessing upon the food that you've provided for our needs. May that too nourish and strengthen us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 